What's up guys? Caleb here from Ellsworth Razors. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. I am back home in my regular den bathroom here and uh, I'm really excited for today's first impression because I'm going to be looking at the very controversial War from the Four Horsemen series by Barrister and Mann. For the brush with that, I decided to go ahead and use this very dark, tough looking Alpha Outlaw brush with the G5D knot. For the razor, I'm going to be using my satin version of the original Dracount, which I haven't used for about a month and a half now since I've been away. And for the blade, I'm using the Wismet Super Iridium for the first time. That's kind of highly recommended to me. And last but not least for the bowl, I'm going to be using this brand new Festus Bowl by Thirsty Badger. So we got some of that lather all whipped up here in that Thirsty Badger Festus Bowl. I will say this uh, outlaw with the G5D knot did a great job along with the bowl. Let's go ahead and get some water on the face. I have not used the cube in about a month and a half too because I've been away and I decided not to bring the cube with me. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this PAA cube pre-shave. You know, people have mixed feelings about the pre-shave, especially with these post base race artisan bases. A lot of people will say that you don't need it. Um, I might do like a, a test, you know, maybe use the pre on like one side of the face and then don't use it on the other side of the face or something just to kind of do a comparison at some point and see if that really is the case. Um, but I find that, you know, I do enjoy using it the times that I, I do put on. I can't tell if that's just me kind of injecting some bias into the shave because I expect the pre-shave to do something for me. Um, I couldn't tell you, but I do enjoy using it. Just get a little bit of water in here, add some additional hydration. One thing I will say is um, the, I, I can't tell if it was the new bowl, the Thirsty Badger bowl, or if it was the new knot and uh, this G5D from Alpha just needs some breaking in or something. But man, oh man, did that lather ever take a lot of water. I, you know, I started off slow and I started adding water into it and adding more water and more water. And I don't know how many generous water additions I did into that lather, but it just kept taking the water like it was nothing. And, you know, it's a nice, dense sort of lather right now, but I definitely feel like I could do a bit more lather building on the face to really get it nice and slick and hydrated here. This is a very lovely brush indeed though, the Alpha Outlaw. It is 6063 black anodized aluminum. So that is architectural grade aluminum. It is very durable. It will last quite a while. And I think the price point is pretty reasonable too. I want to say it's around 70 or $80 US, which would probably put it just over $100 Canadian. But, uh, you know, with a very nice SHD G5 knot in it and that nice aluminum construction, very good value there. Feels great in the hand as well. Just wet the tips a bit more there. Keep building this lather. Um, so for the soap today, we are using War. Now I had um, ordered, you know, a, a number of different sets before I left and while I was away and was waiting for all of them to come in. And there were a handful that I'd been wanting and waiting for the release on for quite some time. There was uh, Seaforth Black Watch and um, McDuff's Autumn Cabin, 
which you know I started looking for Macduff's Autumn Cabin maybe late July or early August when I knew the fall months were approaching and it just you know it wasn't really available anywhere so I had to wait for the release so I just picked that up and I'm looking forward to trying it as well as the rest of the four horsemen series by Barrister and Mann but this particular one that I'm using right now, War, has been very controversial, shall we say? And um, being the curious person that I am, I wanted to give it a try first, just to see what all the controversy was about. Hmm, rather dense. I think I'm going to give it a little bit more water here. This G5D is uh, shedding a tiny bit too. I guess that's normal for an SHD, a brand new SHD knot like this. So yes, so back to the war. Um, you know, even on the, the description, and so, so some backstory, take a step back here. The, uh, Four Horsemen series, if you haven't heard of it, it's been released as like a seasonal release for the Halloween fall season. Um, it's a themed release and it released back in towards the end of October. I think it shipped from the Razor Company on the 18th of October. And there are four different fragrances in the series. There's Death, Famine, Plague, and War. They're all built around a core Shepra um, base kind of fragrance, which Death is just the core Shepra. And then the other three, Famine, Plague, and War, have some additional notes layered into them to kind of um, expound upon their individual themes. And the idea of the War fragrance, let's just, uh, actually before I start shaving there, let's take a look at it. This is war right here. And uh, let's look at the pour. You can see I scooped a nice, generous scoop out of there. It's a very flat sort of pour, not uh, lumpy as some of the others would be. And it was, I would say, um, on the softer side for a base. It was very, very soft when I scooped into it. All right, let's go ahead and use this Wizumet for the first time in the original Dracant in satin finish. First few strokes, very nice. So, um, so yes, the the theme of the war is it's meant to be to channel the the primary notes of gunmetal, ozone, and uh, gunpowder, or or gun smoke, are meant to be the main sort of fragrance notes in there um, that set it apart from the other fragrances in the set, but. Some people tried it and they said, you know, off the tub, all they got was the spice cilantro. And, you know, cilantro is a delicious spice when you put it on food, um, but it's not necessarily, it's a very strong smelling spice, very, very green. And it's not the kind of thing that you would typically want to have on your face. or be smelling all day long. And so some people were saying, um, when they smelled it off the tub, that's all they got. They didn't get the gunmetal, they didn't get the smoke, they didn't get anything but the cilantro. And even on the Barrister and Man's description, you know, they say this fragrance is, is not gonna be for everyone, and it's going to be um, a polarizing one. But I don't think the intention was for it to smell like cilantro. And I will say that when I smelled it off the tub, I really did get that cilantro smell. It smelled, I, I couldn't smell anything else. On the face so far, it's not smelling a whole lot different than it did off the tub. I am mostly getting a cilantro smell. 
However, I will say this in strength. It's right in that medium range, and so it's not overpowering, and I actually don't hate it. I, I actually kind of enjoy it. So far, I wouldn't put it in the like, you know, whoa, oh my god, this is going to be a den topper for me. But it's not bad. It's definitely not a no. Um, I'm kind of liking it, and so I'm really interested to see how the splash will round that out. These Wismet blades are doing quite nicely so far. I'm on about a week worth of growth. I think the last time I shaved was, I wanna say Sunday of last week, and it's now like Monday night. So doing quite well, especially, you know, in the original Jacquin with its 0.73 millimeter gap in neutral exposure. Um, I would put them up there in the high end of sharpness so far. So back to the War Soap. The actual fragrance notes listed for the soap are citrus, gunpowder, aldehydes, or I don't, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, but yeah, citrus gunpowder, aldehydes. And then in the middle, there's leather. I think there's some patchouli as well. And then in the base, there's clary sage and amber. And then that, that's all wrapped around that core Shipra, which has oak moss, labdanum, and I think patchouli as well. And honestly, I, I can't say that I can pick out all those different notes. I think maybe I'm getting a bit of the leather in there. Some of the patchouli. Oh, there was resin in there too, in the uh, in the middle. So yeah, definitely getting the leather, the patchouli. Not really getting the gun smoke or gun powder. Not really getting the metal, the gun steel, as it's described. And. It's true that the combined effect does just kind of read a cilantro. Now, you know, maybe that's not a bad thing if you like cilantro or if you like kind of interesting, unique fragrances that are unlike anything else in your den. Okay, that was really interesting. I just uh, lathered up in between videos there and suddenly I'm getting a lot of gunmetal and leather and ozone and gunpowder and I don't smell cilantro at all. So that is very interesting. It's like off the tub on the first whiff and then the first application on the face. All I could smell was cilantro and nothing else. And then I lathered it up for a second pass on the face and the cilantro is gone and the leather and the gunmetal and the ozone and gunpowder and a bunch of these other notes they're describing suddenly just show up. Very interesting fragrance. Um, I did not mention the price point on these. So these are a nice sort of standard artisan soap price. I believe both the soap and splash were running about $20 each individually 
for each soap and splash in the Four Horsemen set. That's in US dollars. In Canadian dollars, at the current conversion rate, they're around 26 or 27 each. Probably closer to 25 at a normal conversion rate, which would make them about $50 Canadian for the set. And $40 US for the set. Um, there was also, at the time when I purchased them, a box set sale going on in the pre-order. I believe you could order all four sets for 130 US instead of 160. So you get a $30 savings there. And also, TRC was offering free shipping, so that was nice. I ended up getting hit with the taxes and uh, the customs processing fee. There were two packages, and that was $10 each processing fee. All right, let's give this Four Horsemen Splash a shot. Flows out nicely from the bottle. Clear. Feels like that alcohol spoon. I didn't check to see if it was a, a non-alcoholic splash, but I feel like it is. That it definitely has that alcohol punch. Definitely more robust and complex fragrance profile on the splash than on the soap. All those similar notes, but they're coming out more individually. And now that I started to smell the steel and the leather, it's coming through nicely in the splash too. So um, I stand corrected and I, you know what? It's growing on me. Um, this is actually moving into, uh, moving out of the, yeah, it's all right kind of zone into it. Yeah, I actually really like this. I think this is one that um, will grow on me and could become a hit. Maybe similar to something like a Noble Otter Plunder, which um, has a lime notes in it or citrus notes and then like a black pepper and like gunpowder. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. We'll see if it's uh, wife approved. So that was it for the soap for the Thirsty Badger Bowl. Very, very nice. Um, I need to get a little bit used to it because it's shallower than my Cayenne, um, sorry, Cayenne Resin Bowl. And it also doesn't have the lip, so I have to worry about the lather kind of escaping. The Cayenne Bowl has a lip to hold the lather in, but very, very nice. And um, I didn't say the price point, but this was about $45 Canadian, which means it's probably under 40 bucks US. Um, there's some shipping involved, uh, which was quite hefty, but even then it was like 70-ish dollars Canadian for a handmade ceramic bowl, which is frankly, you know, I would say second to none. I haven't really seen a better ceramic bowl than that out there. Uh, the Alpha Outlaw brush performed very, very nicely. The G5D not shedded a little bit. I think it's still shedding some, so I just need to kind of put it through its paces there. Yeah, like a fiber came out there. But uh, apart from the shedding, it was very, very nice. Feels great in the hand, nice bevels, uh, nice kind of channels there, or um, yeah, ver vertical kind of grooves in it for you to grip it. Just overall, yeah, very nice brush. And the Wismet in the Dracant, in the original, these are very nice, very, very, very smooth. I was pretty much all the way to BBS after two passes. Um, I did do like a, a second across the green pass, which wasn't on video there. And you know, by then I was pretty much almost there and I just did the against the grain for good measure. Um, I would also say it's, it's a, on the very sharp side because I actually got a weep or two um, against the grain on the upper lip and down here on the neck. And that rarely happens for me with the Dracant uh, original because it's a neutral exposure. In order to get that, you gotta have a really sharp blade. So it just means I need to use a lighter touch when I have a Wismet locked in, but it performed very nicely. I see why J-Mac and so many other people swear by it. Um, so that's gonna be it. Uh, super happy to be back. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you. 
and I will see you in the next video.